We are conditioned into America culture, into America ways, all right? We are not African Americans, all right? Uh, you got a flyer. Open up the middle of your flyer there, okay? I'm gonna show you where the name come from. You too, sis. Open the middle of your flyer. Because Africa was named by a man named Leo Scipio Africanus. Right. Okay? And America was named by a man named what's his name? America Vespucci. Okay? So those are by words. Those names are, we're gonna show you out the Bible. Give me Isaiah 55. I, uh, 65 and uh, 15. Okay, we're gonna show you where these names come from. Alright? The book of Isaiah, chapter 65, verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. The Most High says when we go into captivity, we shall leave our name for a curse. Read. And ye shall leave your name for a curse unto my chosen. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. And they're going to slay us. They're going to kill us. And they're going to call us by another name. Okay. And that's what's happening to us today. We are not African Americans, and we're going to prove to you at the Bible that we are the 12 tribes of Israel, God's chosen people. That's right. Okay? Now, give me uh, Deuteronomy here. All right, one one. Yeah, what you got? Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. Thou shalt become an astonishment. Read. A proverb and a byword. Do you know what a proverb is? Nigger. Cool, lazy, shiftless. Those are proverbs, okay? A matter of fact, uh, uh, um, your name is a proverb. God didn't ordain for us to have those names, okay? Your name, Joe, your name, Michelle, and so forth, it may be. Those are not Israelites' names. Those are proverbs. Read. And a byword among, among all nations, whither the Lord shall lead thee. And a byword, African American. Negro American, uh, na uh, Native, Native American, all of those are by words too, by means too, okay? So those names are not ours, all right? That's right. So that, those names was given to us by the slave master to keep us sleep. Give me uh, Exodus uh, 11 and 7. Exodus chapter 11 verse 7. But against any of the children of Israel shall not a dog move his tongue. Now this is the most high it says against any of the children of Israel not a dog move his tongue. A dog can't talk. Okay, so it's not talking about a four-legged animal. It's talking about a nation, talking about people. Not a people, not a nation move his tongue against his children, the 12 tribes of Israel. Is that it on that? Against man or beast, that ye may know how that the Lord doth put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. Okay, the Most High say he put a difference between the Egyptians and Israel. All right, I just showed you Egyptian. The Most High said that it's going to be a base nation. They'll never rise again. They'll never rule again. Because that at one time they had us in captivity uh, when... Uh, when Joseph was, was uh, uh, se uh, second in command, right. but then when Pharaoh died, then the second Pharaoh that took over did not know Joseph, right. our poor father, okay? So, and then therefore they put us into bondage, hard rigor, okay? So now, because of that, the Most High says that uh, anybody rule, uh, uh, put us in hard rigor or uh, bondage, okay, they'll never rise again. He's going to curse them, all right? Now, give me uh, Genesis, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28 1. Now I showed you, I showed you what the Most High says about the Egyptians. Now we're gonna look at the uh look at Israel, okay? Us. Alright? Now give me uh Deuteronomy uh one and one. Yes, sir. Alright. So this is talking about us now, okay? The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 1, verse 1. These be the words which Moses spake unto all Israel. Okay, so Most High gave Moses a command. He said, speak unto all Israel. He didn't say all nations. He said all Israel. All right? Now, we're going to give me 28 uh, and 1. 15, I'm sorry. 20 and 15. All right? So now we're going to look at some of these curses and so forth. Okay? Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 15. But it shall come to pass. It shall come to pass a future prophecy, meaning that it's going to happen. Read. If thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day, that all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So many curses. 
all these curses. Okay, so the Most High says all of these curses going to come upon the children of Israel if they do not hearken. Hearken means listen. If we don't listen, we have always been hard-headed people. We are hard. We was hard-headed back then. We are hard-headed today because the white man has instilled into you, into you. All right, believe what they say and not your people. Right. And we are prophets of the Most High. We are here to show you and to tell you who you are. Right. Okay? You are not Africans. All right? Now, we're going to show you some curses. Give me 16. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city, and cursed shalt thou be in the field. Okay, now when you go to any city in the, in the world, okay, any city in the United States, where do, uh, where will you find the black, the so-called blacks? Where will you find them? In the ghettos, right? Right, sis? Okay, so it says that, read that again. Curse shalt thou be in the city. Curse shalt thou be in the city. The ghettos is a curse, all right? Even the, uh, uh, the, uh, the where the Native Americans are at, uh, Reservation. reservations. Even the reservations, those are ghettos. That's, That's right. a curse, That's right. okay? All right, and, uh, and curse shalt thou be in the field. And when we came off the slave ships, where did we go? We went straight to the field, picking cotton, tobacco, and so forth, okay? Those are curses. Now, that there is to identify us. Give me 46. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Now, they is talking about the curses will be upon thee for a sign, okay? So if I wanted to know uh, Bank of America Bank, I, how would I know Okay, unless there was a sign put on that building, I would not know that's Key Bank or, or so forth. Am I right? You see what I'm saying? Okay, so the Most High says that these curses that he's going to put upon us is going to be for a sign. Okay, read on. And for a wonder. A wonder. Meanwhile, I did, I, I'm amazed. I didn't know that was them. Read on. And upon thy seed forever. And upon thy seeds forever, meaning our children, our grandchildren, great-grandchildren, so forth, are not exempt from these curses. They are also uh, put into this here curse as well, okay? So now, uh, uh, give me uh, 30. Now this is a process of elimination. The white men, the Jewish people over there in uh, uh, Warrensville over there it's calling themselves God-chosen people and over in Israel they saying they're God-chosen people, right? So we're going to play a process of elimination and we're going to see who these curses, who did these curses happen to? Did it happen to us or did it happen to them? Right. Read on. Deuteronomy 28, verse 30. Thou shalt betroth a wife. It said, thou shalt betroth a wife. Now, what do betroth mean? Betroth means to marry. So thou shalt marry a wife. Read on. And another man shall lie with her. And another man shall lie with her. Now, who did that happen to? That happened to our forefathers in slavery. Right. Okay, when the white man wanted to come and rape their wives, what did they do? They come to the cabin, told him to get out and raped him. Or even he stood there. It wasn't nothing he could do. He said, another man shall lie with her. Read on. Thou shalt build an house, and thou shalt not dwell therein. And thou shalt build a house. Okay? We built that white house over there. Right. Okay? The white, uh, the, uh, our forefathers built that. They said, not, we shall not dwell therein. We never dwelt in that white house. Only but just to, uh, to be butlers and slaves in there to clean it up. That's it. Barack Obama is not Israel. Right. Okay? All right. Give me 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. All right. Now, thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Now, that happened to our forefathers and former, uh, foremothers in slavery, right? You agree, sis? All right. Now, when uh, when they got mad or did something wrong, what they do? They took a problem and gave it to Master down in Arkansas somewhere, or Master Mo in Virginia somewhere, and they never seen their children again. Right. Read that again. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long. So they're going to sit and look for their children all the day long. Okay, read on. And there shall be no might in thine hand. And there will be no might in our hands to get our children back. All right? No military might, nor no economic might. Now, we didn't have it back then. We still don't have it today. Okay? All right. Now, uh, uh, what's that? 46? Uh, 46, bring another nation against thee. Uh, 40, 49. 
Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 49. Bring it out. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from no. oh, sorry. Go ahead. a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. Now, now, what is America's symbol? Huh? No, no, the symbol. America's symbol. Oh, I, I don't know. It's, it's the eagle. eagle. Oh, I was going to say the eagle. Right. Okay, read that again, so. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. He said he's going to bring a nation against thee from far. All right. From the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. As swift as the eagle flyeth. So the Most High describing your enemy. He's describing who's coming to get you. Right. America. Okay. The Spaniards and them, so forth, is coming to get us. That's who he's talking about here. That's Read on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Deuteronomy 28, verse 49. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far, from the end of the earth, as swift as the eagle flyeth. So the Most High said, as swift as the eagle flyeth. It's talking about America. The Most High said that he's going to bring a nation against us. Okay, as swift as the eagle fly, read. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. Since we didn't understand their tongue when they came over there, we were still speaking Hebrew. That's right. Okay, uh, you ever seen any slave movies? Okay, so you, you you know when they were saying, please master, please master, master don't take my child, master please don't put me, master please don't put me here, please don't do this to me, master. M-A-S-S-A, -S -S right? Master. Because now the the uh, the, the so-called white man thought it was a broken dialogue that they they couldn't speak English, but that wasn't a broken dialogue. That was that was uh, Hebrew. Okay, that means burden, right. mean oppressor. Right. That's what master means. You look at the strong concordance. That's exactly what it means. So they knew what they were saying. They was calling the slave masters mass uh, uh, oppressors. Burden. That's what they was calling them. That's, right. That's Hebrew. We were still speaking Hebrew, Hebrew when we came over here. Right. Okay. All right. Give me uh, 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it out. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Now, Egypt is synonymous for bondage, for slavery, okay? We're going to show you what the Most High calls, uh, calls Egypt. Because Egypt's real name was Mizraim. Okay, so now this is the name with the most high calls Egypt. Read the book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. So, Egypt is bondage, means bondage, slavery. Okay, that's another word for bondage, slavery. All right, so we're gonna read 68 in its entirety. Okay, read. Deuteronomy chapter 28 verse 68 and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again into bondage into slavery again with ships no with bus with ships with trains with ships did we come over here and ship says okay so hey those Jewish people a not God chosen people. That's they right. stole our identity in 1948. That's right. Okay, they know who we are, but we don't know who we are. Right. Okay, so they so all of these curses here, they didn't fit none of these curses. So how can they be God chosen people? Right. Get out. Okay. All right. Read on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. We shall see our homeland no more again. That's why we still in America, okay? Because he said we're going to live out our captivity in a land that we was brought over to, okay? Read. And there ye shall be sold unto your enemy. We shall be sold unto our enemies. Read on. For bond men. Slave men. And bond women. And slave women. And no man shall buy you. And no man shall buy you. That's the old cracker word. No man shall receive, uh, rescue you, redeem you. That's the old cracker word, buy, all right? Malcolm X fell, Martin Luther King fell, uh, Harriet Tubman fell, Marcus Garvey fell. They all fell try to, uh, to try to save us, right. okay? So because the Most High said we're going to serve out our captivity here in America, okay? Right, right. Why are we going to serve uh, serve our, our term here? Give me uh, uh, first King 1 and 8. Uh, I'm, I'm sorry, eight, first King 8 and 46. 
The reason why we're going to serve out our term here in America, okay, and everywhere else we scattered, they're going to serve out their terms of slavery, okay, where they at, right. all right, until this, read on. The book of 1 Kings, chapter 8, verse 46, if they sin against thee, for there is no man that sinneth not, and thou be angry with them. Now, did we sin against the Most High? That's why we over here as slaves, okay, because we sin against the Most High, read on. And deliver them to the enemy so that they carry them away captives into the land of the enemy far or near. Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Until, until we what? Yet, if they shall bethink themselves. Until we bethink ourselves. Bethink means to remember. To remember who we are. Okay, that's why we out here. We out here to, to, to show you who you are so you can remember who you are, right. okay? Yes. That you're God-chosen people, you're God's special people. Right. And to come out of this nonsense we in, believing everything that the so-called white men tell us, like they're gods, okay? But they're not, all right? right. They're nothing but liars and murderers and killers. Yes. Read on. Yet if they shall bethink themselves in the land whither they were carried captives and repent, and make supplication unto thee. Repent, okay? Meaning change your ways, all right? Change your evil ways, your evil doings, all right? Read on. In the land, excuse me, and repent and make supplication unto thee. In the land of them they carried them captive, saying, we have sinned, we have done perverse, we have committed wickedness. Okay, so we remember that we have committed sin against the Most High, all right? Then, was that the next verse, or was it, uh... Verse 49. Then, hear thou their prayer and their supplication in heaven, thy dwelling place, and maintain their cause. So then, with the Most High, if we remember who we are, okay, remember that we are God's chosen people, we are the 12 tribes of Israel, right. then will he hear our, pre our, our pleas and our cries and our prayers, That's okay? Right. But we got to come back to God's law, That's right. okay? Nathaniel of Israel United in Christ. Please subscribe to our YouTube channels. Stay up to date with our latest events, music, and classroom lessons. IUIC plans to continue visiting different countries where this gospel has not been preached before. IUIC needs your help in pushing this truth. So join us, subscribe to our Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and podcasts, and stay up to date with us. For more information, please visit www.israelunite.org.